Well, last week I told you that we're going to be wrapping up this series on the Holy Spirit and that we're going to have a very special guest here, and we do. And that is actually my father, Doug Swilly, and he's going to be speaking with us this morning. Dad, why don't you come up here? And it just so happened, it just so worked out that my grandmother from Florida is here, Jean, and my mother, and, and my sister as well. And so we will honor you and thank you for being here as well. And uh, would you guys just stretch your hands towards my dad here, and we're just going to pray that the Word of God is delivered and we're going to receive it. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you anoint Doug here to deliver your Word this morning, and I thank you that we would receive your Word, your truth about the Holy Spirit and about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and God, that you would stir some things up in our hearts for desiring every good thing that you have for us, every good gift. And everybody said amen. 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 Thank you, Seeds Church. Thank you very much. We got any disciples in here this morning? Yes. Yeah, disciples, Christ followers. We teach the boys and girls. Uh, mm, you might not know this, but I'm a children's pastor. Okay, so don't turn me off. Just uh, open up and listen to what I have to say. Uh, I'll try to say it in a way that you'll be able to understand. But... Um, uh, we teach our boys and girls that a disciple is someone who studies the teachings of their master and follows their example. So if you're a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to be somebody, if you're a Christ follower, you're going to be somebody who studies your master, who is Jesus, studies his teachings, and follows his example. And what I'm want to encourage you to do is be a, be a person of the Bible. Be a person who studies to show yourself improved. Be someone who looks into the Bible to understand who he is, what he has, and what he can do for you. Be somebody who looks into the Word to see what is it that I'm seeing in this Scripture that I am not that I need to change my life so I can walk in congruence with who Jesus is and who he would have me to be and say the things he would have me to say. Amen? Amen. 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 And so I get the, uh, the honor to come and speak to you all today, and our subject top, uh, topic is baptism of the Holy Spirit or baptism with the Holy Spirit. And I hope that you all... If you have missed any of the last three weeks, I hope that you've had a time to go get on your website and see the podcast. I've got to see them, and I thought there was some really, really good material in there for understanding who the Holy Spirit is and, um, and how He can be a part of your life. Uh, when I look into the Scripture, I, I see in John chapter 14, Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit, and He calls Him a comforter, or some translation might say a helper. Um, the Greek word for that is a paraclete, and it actually does mean counselor and helper. It also means an intercessor, an advocate, someone who will strengthen you, someone who will stand by you. And when he says this, he says that he will remain in you forever. Wow, that's good. He also says that the Comforter will teach you all things, and he will cause you to recall everything that I have said. Well, that's a blessing, isn't it? He also says that he will testify of himself, the Comforter, the Paraclete, the Helper. And he also says that I have to go away. Before he'll come. If I don't go away, he won't come. But if I go away, he will come. God will send him to you to be in close fellowship with him. You see, Christianity is not, it's not just a religion. It is a relationship. It's a relationship with God through what Jesus has done. And you have this helper, this paraclete with you who is the Holy Spirit that you're in relationship with, that you fellowship with. He also will convict us and convince us of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. 
Also, and I love this, he will guide you into all truth. He will tell you whatever he hears, and he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come. Wow! God loved us so much that he gave us his one and only son, the word of God who became flesh and lived among us, became a human being, a dirty (laughs) human being in comparison to who God is in his divinity and in his majesty. He left that behind to become one of us, to show us the way, and to go to the cross as holy and righteous and to pay a penalty for sin that we could never pay. He satisfied it when he became our sin on the cross. And he didn't just stay there, but God raised him back to life three days later. And you think, wow, that's just awesome. We're going to get to go to heaven in life. It's just going to be good in the, in the ever after. But you know what? Everlasting life begins when you make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. you already beginning to walk in your eternity. And so you learn the ways of your master and you follow his teachings. And he put a person of who he is on the inside of you, the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit. And it says all these things. He will be your helper. He will be your comforter. He will be your guide. He will lead you into all truth. He will remind you of the things that I told you. You will not forget them. He will burn them into your consciousness. And I love this. He will guide you into all truth. I like to say it this way. The Holy Spirit is the guide on the inside. Now, how do we get the Holy Spirit? Well, I look in the Scripture because I'm studying the teachings of my Master and following His ways to be a Christ follower. And after Jesus is risen from the dead, you, some of you may remember this story, His disciples were hiding out in some place that was all locked up because they were afraid they were going to come get arrested and taken away. But Jesus, the risen Jesus Christ, showed up. I don't know. How did he do that? I don't know. But he showed up and he revealed himself to them, showed them his hands and his side, and he talked to them. And before he left, the Bible says that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. And Pastor J.D., in his first podcast on the Holy Spirit, talked about that Greek word that got translated for spirit is kind of unusual for us in thinking that way, that it's a, it's a wind or it's like a breath. In another place you can find it's like a puff. And that Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit. And how many of you believe that they received the Holy Spirit right then? He said, receive the Holy Spirit. So They already believe that he's the son of God, that he died on the cross, and he's revealed himself. They see that he's risen from the dead. Well, I just say they're born again. They made him the Lord of their lives. And so now they have the Holy Spirit because of that. And I just think that's an interesting thing to point to draw, that he breathed on them. And we say that the Spirit, that's who the Spirit is. He is a... He is a wind. He is a breath. Wow. I praise God for that. Amen. I like it. God is good. Now, I tell you that there's going to be times that, um, well, I won't go there because i am got to stay on track. <laughs> I'm that children's pastor. All right. And another thing that he said to his disciples after he had risen from the dead, a time that he was with them, he said this. If any man is thirsty, let him call unto me, and out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. When he says out of his belly, he was talking about out of his spirit man, out of his spirit being. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Well, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. You're kidding me. How do you know that? Because I read the next verse. His next verse says, But this spoke he of the Spirit 
which they who believe on him shall receive, for the Holy Ghost was not given to them, but that Jesus was not glorified, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So I used to think that the Holy Spirit was for everybody. Everybody's a Christian. The Holy Spirit, being baptized in the Holy Spirit is for you. And then I read this verse right here. It says, oh, you got to be thirsty. That's what it says. That's what it says. You got you to want it, right? If you don't want to get baptized in the Holy Ghost, guess what? You won't, okay? You're safe. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, we know that when John the Baptist was baptizing people in the River Jordan, he's—I think he was getting some sort of acclaim. People were just, "Oh, wow, this is just awesome!" Being baptized for repentance of sin—that's my take. That's my guess. That's not scripture. But he did say this. He said, "There's one coming after me." who is greater than I am. I'm not even worthy to loosen his sandals. And when he comes, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The Holy Ghost and fire. And so then we know that we go over and read in Acts chapter 2 how the Holy Spirit fell that day. And what do we see? Wind and fire in that place. And people say, you know, I understand that you know, we're supposed to have power to be witnesses. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. But what is the deal with this fire? That's kind of scary. I agree. <laughs> you know, Moses ran into an encounter like that. He was out in the wilderness tending the sheep, minding his own business. And what did he see? A bush that was on fire. And I don't think there was a little flame above the bush. The bush was on fire and it wasn't consumed. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fiery furnace and the flame was on them and they weren't consumed. Well, there's a lot of people smarter than me. Biblical theologians believe that that fire is, a, is something turned to, burned up, to burn up the desire for sin in your life. So when you get baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire, it's not just about, it's not arcing flames of fire so everybody can see, whoa, man, God's in this place. It's more than that or different than that. It is when you're going to be a witness to other people on the behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ, who He is and what He's done, um, when you're going to be that witness, people are going to watch your life. People are going to watch your life. And if you're just living a sinful life like everybody, like them, what's the difference? You can walk closer to the Lord. We should desire to walk closer to the Lord. And when you get baptized with the Holy Spirit, in another place it says, be filled with the Spirit and keep being filled. It becomes your lifestyle to be filled and keep being filled. And what you are when you're doing that, you're drawing closer to the Lord. And as far as, far as sin is from the Lord, the closer you get to Him, the further you walk away from that temptation, that controlling temptation. Amen? That's not always a chandelier swinging statement when people don't want to talk about sin. But I'm telling you, when you get free from it, when you're able to put it behind and you look, oh, you're always thinking about, man, I just got to get closer to the Lord. I'm, I'm still messing up. And okay, but you turn around and look back. Oh, look how far I've come. I'm not doing that anymore. And I don't do that anymore. And I don't do that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that as I trust in you, that you bring me along. It is a lifetime walk with the Lord to be able to put sin aside because you're drawn close to the Lord. It's not so much that, oh, I can't, I just got to make sure I don't do that again. I, oh, I got to not do that. It's just this. The closer you draw to the Lord, 
the less desire you have for that. You know what happens? It burns away. It burns away. Draw closer to Him. And you know what? That will be fulfilling to you. And there'll be times that you still mess up and people are watching, but you're convicted of it and you go make it right. And that stands out because that is extraordinary. Not everybody does that. Amen? Amen. I got to stay on track. Don't. Now, what I was talking to you a moment ago in Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, it's one of the last things Jesus says to his disciples before he ascends into heaven. He says, But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, everywhere you go. And so that is why you want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. But I thought we already have the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you, you do have the Holy Spirit on the inside. He's your comforter, helper. He's your guide on the inside and lead you in all truth. But it's not the same thing as being baptized with the Holy Spirit because there is another level of power that comes into your life, a boldness to share and proclaim with other people who Jesus is and that He has changed your life and that He will change theirs if they commit to Him. And sometimes we need that boldness. When, I know when I was a kid, you know, I didn't have that boldness because there were people that make fun of you for going to church. And I don't want to be made fun of. I want to be liked by everybody. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And so I didn't always say what I wanted to say. There was times that I did, but not enough. Not enough. And so when I'm talking to kids in kids' church, they know what I'm talking about. I just say the same things that went on in my life when I was a kid. It's going on in their lives. And so they understand. They identify. And so we have this way of teaching them the Holy Ghost will take the chicken out of you. There's a song that even goes with it. I'll spare you. <laughs> but it's still good because the boldness comes. Because on the day of Pentecost... 120 people, I call them disciples because they were studying their master's teachings and following his ways and doing what he told them to do, go wait into Jerusalem. And they were praying in all in one accord. And the Bible says there was a sound of mighty wind came in that place. Wind? Imagine that. We just talked about, that's just cool. And fire sat upon them. And I don't know what that looked like, but based on other things that I know in the Scripture, I can form my own opinion I think the fire sat on them. I mean, like from head to toe. And that would get your attention. And they weren't consumed. And they began to worship God in unknown. How do you know they were worshiping? Because there were people that were out in the streets from other nations that had come there for Pentecost or lay over from Passover to Pentecost. And they say, how, those, how do those guys know my language from, where I, from my country? And hear what they're saying. They're speaking the wonders of God. Well, that's what you do when you're worshiping. You, you speak to Him, His wonders, in worship. That's a good reason right there to want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You get this extra gift cause, called the ability to speak in unknown tongues. It's not anything to be afraid about. Um, there are... Lots of reasons to pray in unknown tongues once you get filled with the Holy Spirit. One, one reason is, it says in Romans chapter 8, we don't always know how to pray for things as we should. We don't know. Does anybody know everything there is, how to, exactly what needs to be prayed? The Holy Spirit knows. So if you yield yourself to Him to pray on behalf of someone for something, you don't know all the details, but He does. Yield yourself to Him. He will help you. Because it says when the, when the 120 were on the rooftop, they began to speak in unknown tongues. Not the Holy Spirit. The people spoke in unknown tongues. And as they spoke in unknown tongues, they were speaking the wonders of God. The wonders of God. They were in a worship Another reason to speak in unknown tongues is because you worship God well. 
there's a scripture where Paul is correcting the Corinthians because they were people were getting up and just speaking in unknown tongues and nobody was interpreting. But what they were really doing was they were praying in unknown tongues. And that's why there wasn't an interpretation. He says, don't spend your, all your time doing that. People need to hear something they understand so they can be edified. They can be built up and, and grow in something. He says, yes, when you're, when you're praying in unknown tongues, you thank the Lord well. Oh, and when I read that, I began, to, I began to meditate on it. You know what? There are some things. When I go to thank God for something, and I just thank Him, and I say, oh, God, I just thank you for this. You're, gosh, you, Lord, you're the bomb. You are awesome. Thank you. I love you, and I'm grateful. And I don't know how many words there are for thank you, like mercy, gracias, gracia. But you run out of them quickly. You run out of words to thank God for as much as you want to thank Him before you get satisfied in your soul. But when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, oh, you can just turn loose in unknown tongues. Oh, Ramana, not by son, that in in an oco sombre. Oh, Rabaha Sandra, da 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 bo sombra. And you can just keep on praying, and all of a sudden, at some point, ah, oh, you just feel at peace. Because you know what? You're satisfied. I thanked Him like I wanted to. I'm complete in thanking Him for that. doesn't mean that you won't thank Him for that again. It's just in that moment to be complete and to be full. There are uh, also, when you are praying in unknown tongues, the Bible says that you ed- or edify yourself. You build yourself up. It is akin to recharging a battery. It is akin to recharging a battery. If you do the research on it and some of the experts on language in the Greek, that's what that's talking about. You know, does anybody in here ever need to recharge your battery? You know, sometimes spiritual things are going on and it just can be so heavy. And if you don't watch it, you can just slip off into disappointment, into discouragement, if you don't watch it. And so, man, that's a good time to go get somewhere. And I tell the boys and girls, go get somewhere. Do not go up to your school and say, hey, man, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Listen to this. <laughs> and just turn loose on the speaking in tongues. You're going to create a big mess if you do that. <laughs> go somewhere. Get by yourself. And just, just start praying in unknown tongues. Just start praying in unknown tongues. And don't quit until you're satisfied. That's how long you pray. When you're satisfied. And what happens? You're changed. You come out of there changed. Be filled and keep being. Be filled and keep being filled. Amen. Now, in three minutes, I'm going to give you a quick testimony. Testimony is this. How did I get filled with the Holy Spirit? When I, Paul Ann and I were still in college, we both wanted to be filled with the Holy Spirit when we wanted to be baptized with the Holy Ghost and speak in unknown tongues. And we had been to several ministry meetings and we had heard about this. Oh, we want this. You know what we decided? We were thirsty. We wanted this. So every time they had an altar call for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we would go down there. They would come by and they would lay hands on us and we would... We misunderstood, and this happened several times. Even I did it many times at, at night when nobody was around. I would get on my knees, and I would pray, Lord God, just baptize me with the Holy Ghost. Nothing. You know why? Because I misunderstood something. I misunderstood. I thought that the Holy Ghost was going to speak through me. I thought it was like, anybody know anything about puppets, children's minister? Put your hand up in the puppet. And I manipulate the puppet. Now, boys and girls don't know that. They see my lips moving and everything, but they don't know that I'm really the one making the puppet talk. I thought the Holy Spirit was going to do that. But you know what? That's not the case. It doesn't say the Holy Spirit spoke in unknown tongues. It says the believers spoke in unknown tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. And you know the words? They don't really always come through your ear and come out. Sometimes they just come straight up out of here, and you said, my goodness, I mean, you're thinking that, my goodness, this, wow. And so, I met with this one man to get prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and he, he screened me first to make sure that I was thirsty. 
and that I was a believer. Then after we did those two things, he says, all right, take me by the hand. So I took him by the hand, and he began to lead me in a prayer. And he would say part, and I'd say part of the prayer. And, you know, he said, and right now, Lord, and right now, Lord, I ask you to baptize me with the Holy Spirit. And I said that. And I'm going to worship you in unknown tongues without hesitation. Ah, that was it. When he said without hesitation, it was like the light went off on the inside of me. I'd been hesitating. I had been hesitating. And I don't even remember all the rest of that prayer, even if it was like 60 seconds after, because I was just thinking one thing. I was that racehorse in the gate. And when we said amen, that was the bell, and I was going to come out of the gate. And when we said amen, he began speaking in unknown tongues, and I began to speak in unknown tongues because I did not hesitate. I had to take a step by faith that what I was saying was coming from the Lord. And I'm so glad that I did because it changed my life forever. And God is no respecter of persons. What he's done for me, trust me, what he's done for me, he will do for you. We're not done. (laughs) Sorry, you're going to take that water and drink it, but I have something else to say about it. So I got got this illustration. Um, So when we become born again, Jesus says, here, breathe on the disciples, receive the Holy Spirit. So I got this bottle of water. And now this water's in me. But that does not mean, <clears throat> that's different than the word baptism. The word baptism means immerse. That's why when we water by, baptize people, like we're going to do on Wednesday night, this coming week, we're going to immerse them. They're going to get all the way wet. We're not going to hold anybody down, like, you know, where you're going to go down, you're going to come up, but they're going to be immersed because it represents what happened with Jesus being buried and then coming raised to new life. So bab- baptism means immerse. Baptismo, that Greek word, means immerse. And so we see that there is a different experience than just receiving the Holy Spirit at salvation and getting eternal life. The Holy Spirit's in you like this water. Is in me. But baptism in the Holy Spirit does not just mean that the water is in me. It means the water is on me. Do you see the difference? Water is now on me. I'm now immersed in it. And here's the thing about this. When you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, by the way, I didn't introduce this guy earlier. This is my brother-in-law, Jeremy. From He's a worship leader in Bristol. He came in to visit us this week, and I'm just so glad that he's able to worship with us this morning. So here I am. I'm now baptized in the Holy Spirit. I got it not just in me, but I got it on me. And now when I come in contact with this guy, now he, this rubbed off on him, and he got some, he got some Jesus. Or in, in other words, what got on me now affected him in some way. Does that make sense? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray. We're going to dismiss a service. And any of you that want to be dismissed, please feel free to do so. This is not about who's more spiritual and who's not spiritual. But what we're going to do is we're going to sit here for a few more minutes after we dismiss. And you can do one of two things. If you just want to sit here and you want to soak in the presence of God... If you're already baptized in the Holy Spirit, I would encourage you to take this time to, to just begin to pray in the Spirit. And if you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, maybe you've got it in you, but now you want it on you. We're going to invite you to come down here to the front. Our prayer team is going to be here. And one of the ways that we see 
the Holy, there's different ways we see in the Scripture the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit happens. The very first way is that ga- believers were just gathered in a room in obedience to Jesus when Jesus said, go and wait in Jerusalem. And 10 days later, they've been waiting for 10 days. They're gathered and praying. And then, boom, all of a sudden, Holy Spirit showed up. That's one way. Another thing that we see in the, in the book of Acts is that some people received Holy Spirit baptism by the laying on of hands. And now, when I say laying on of hands, I'm, when I lay hands on my dad here, on Doug, I'm not pushing him down or doing anything like that. I hope I didn't hurt your neck just now. Sorry. I'll do it to Aaron. I'm not pushing Aaron down. I just say, I'm going to just lay my hands on him and say, receive the gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So we've been talking about this for weeks, you guys. And I know some people have been turned off because of abuses or because of wrong teaching. But now is an opportunity. We're going to give you again to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And this time we, last week, we just said, if you want it, just put your hands out. And I believe some of you received it. If you want to come again and get prayed for it again because you, you just want to, that's fine. But this time we're going to lay hands on you. And so again, I want you guys to stand up with me. I'm going to pray. We're going to proclaim a benediction. Those of you that want to be dismissed, you can be. Those of you that just want to sit in the room and soak, you can be. You can do that. Those of you that want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit or if you want to just You want just prayer for that again. Maybe you did that years ago, but you feel like, I've not been walking in that. I just would like someone to pray with me again. Okay, we can pour the water on you again. I'm not literally, but you know what I'm saying? The Spirit can do that. And we're going to ask you to come down front, and our prayer team is going to come around here. And uh, this is not going to be on film. This is not going to be on camera. We're not going to Facebook Live that part of the service. But this is just going to be a moment where we're going to pray for you, and you receive it by faith, like you receive your salvation by faith. All right, so Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you that you have good gifts for your children. And God, if you have it, I want it. If, you just, if that's your heart's cry, I just ask you to just come into agreement with that prayer and just say that even out of your own mouth right now. God, if you have it, I want it. Lord, we thank you, the Holy Spirit. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that it is a breath of fresh air into our lives. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you fill us up to... Empower us to be bold witnesses. God, I thank you that you empower us to live holy lives. So we just ask you to come and move and have your way in us and among us right now. Now may the Lord bless you and may he keep you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. May the love of God the Father be with you. And may the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In Jesus' name.